Sophia, thanks for asking how necessary are ads, are paid ads? If you follow my content, you know that I'm always advocating. In fact, one of my eight practices of authentic business, practice number four, I think, uh, let's see, joy for productivity, healthy money content. Yes, practice number four is content distribution, a big part of which is using paid ads to get your content, your articles, your videos, even your podcast episodes, uh, your message, your presence in front of a lot more of uh, the right people who would probably benefit from what you are doing. So, um, and, and, and content distribution is not, is not selling, selling, selling through ads. Of course I sell. I you know, just recommend the simplest way of thinking about it is 80-20, the 80-20 rule. Of, of the 10 things you post on social media or through your email newsletter or wherever you touch your audience, of 10 things, let eight of them be content as ministry. You know, content as just, this is something that I hope is helpful because it's been helpful for me or for the people I work with or something inspiring, some story that gives hope to people that uh, want to transform in the way that you help people. So 80% is content that uplifts in some way, okay? And 20% is selling, like, hey, please hire me for as your coach. Please buy my uh, online course. Please uh, join my uh, next event, okay? So um, are ads necessary? Back to the question. And Sophia says, you know, I... I have naturally, I've grown my clients through just kind of word of mouth and organic without paying for ads on Facebook or Instagram, for example. Um, and, you know, I'm, I have a resistance to growing through ads. I would be curious, Sophia, if you want to say more about what your resistance is. But I used to also, well, before I knew how to run Facebook and Instagram ads, of course, I didn't know how to run ads. So all I did was uh, the most effective thing I found besides running ads, the most effective thing uh, there's two things. One is joint venture partners. The joint ventures are um, making friends with people who have an audience and then having them promote your service or your content to their audience. So that's, that's a joint venture, or these days I call it a collab, C-O-L-L-A-B, collab, collaboration. So if you didn't run ads, collabs or joint ventures would be probably the most effective way to, to grow your reach. Um, the second uh, most effective way without ads would be search engine optimization, SEO. But SEO is a more of a long-term venture. Uh, SEO, SEO experts always recommend to their clients to wait six, six months to 18 months after starting working with an SEO. After, start, after starting to work with an SEO expert, you, you should not expect results for six to 18 months. And most of us don't have a budget to work with a good SEO expert. And uh, so, you know, we do it ourselves. And so it might even be more like 12 to 24 months. Um, I have had some traction with SEO and, the, and what, I've, what has worked for me, I've taught about it in, in my class, Authentic SEO, but joint ventures are certainly, anyway, but so is it necessary to do ads? Once I learned how to do Facebook and Instagram ads, I'm like, this is incredible. Basically think about this. You can either wait for word of mouth which by the way, all of us have. I, I never put word of mouth as a marketing channel. Why? Because word of mouth is the baseline for every business. That's not a marketing channel. It happens naturally for every business. It's not something you do. Word of mouth is something that happens because of everything else that you do. Good service, you know, good customer service, good product, content, you know, good networking, whatever. Then word of mouth happens naturally, right? A good follow-up, but word of mouth, anyway. So, so once I started realizing how to run ads, I'm like, this is amazing. It's like having natural word of mouth, except I'm actually doing something to generate word of mouth by the thousands of people seeing my stuff. So let me ask you this, Sophia, the question. How do you feel about spending $10, $10 to reach 1,000 people who are within the realm of people who would probably like your content and your presence and your, and your services. $10 to reach a thousand people. If it's really expensive that day or that month, then at least you can reach 300 people with the $10. That's what's happening with Facebook and Instagram ads. With LinkedIn ads, you just multiply that by five to 10 times. So you would spend $50 to reach 
a thousand of the right people, you know. So um, now reaching them doesn't mean that they become your clients. Reaching them just means that they're scrolling. At least they're scrolling past your your post or your offer. So you may have to reach them a, a dozen times before they decide to, you know, work with you or or check it out. So um, ads. Uh, are basically it's like word of mouth except you just add you add wings you you add a, a rocket you add fuel whatever whatever analogy you want to use uh, you you just you multiply your word of mouth efforts by a thousand by just spending ten dollars twenty dollars thirty I always recommend my students start with thirty dollars a month three zero U S dollars a month and that's probably what all of us can afford you know. If it's your business, isn't it worth spending thirty dollars a month to advertise your business? I hope so. <laughs> What's if it's it's not a business? I wouldn't call it a business if you couldn't spend thirty dollars a month to advertise. So, um, yes, uh, it's like word of mouth. And secondly, I think about um, uh, paid ads is like having a the, the biggest joint venture partner in the world, the biggest collaborator in the world. It's called Facebook. It's called Instagram. It's like you're going to this joint venture, you know, gorilla, and say, hey. Would you mind taking this article, this video, this link, and sharing it with a thousand of the right people? Sure, happy to do it. Just pay me ten bucks. Oh, really? Okay, here. <laughs> How many times can I do this? It's really, it's it's like it's like an ATM machine. It's like, oh my gosh, how many times can I do this? Because as you reach people several times, they'll start to notice you. They start to inquire with you. It's it's like a miracle. It really is. Which is also. Because it's a miracle, the dark side of it is like they have all of our information. Like they know exactly how we interact. They know what we like. That's the what people hate on Facebook, Instagram for is all the stuff they know about our psychology is on the flip side. The bright side is that's how I'm able to spend ten dollars and reach you because they know your psychology. That they that's why they allow me to reach you because I define like oh people who are interested in mindfulness and also business and also this and also this author and also this oh we know exactly because we know their psychology we know exactly who to reach so you want to say dark side you want to say bright side on the bright side Facebook and Instagram ads is being a miracle like a savior really to small businesses Small business owners don't have the budget to run television ads or, you know, billboards or uh, send things in the mail. We, I don't have money to do that. All I have money for is $10 here, $10 there. As a small business, how the heck am I supposed to advertise these days? There's no way. Facebook and Instagram. I mean, so, so Facebook and Instagram is like a miraculous savior for small businesses. And of course, big corporations use it too, but big corporations have a much bigger budget. They can run Super Bowl ads. I can't. Right. So, um, so yeah. So, and then ads also, finally ads is like taking SEO and <laughs> removing the battle for getting on the first page of whatever it's like running ads. It's like, Oh, I could just pay you money and I'm on the first page. Great. Can I please do that? Instead of like working so hard, it's like, Oh my God, my, my SEO slipped this month. I got to do something. No, you just pay it, pay money. And now you're on the first page. So I just think that it might be a misunderstanding. Possibly, I'd love to have more of the conversation, like I said, to know what your resistance is to ads. I mean, it could be a technical resistance, meaning I just don't know how to do it. Well, then you can learn, right? Like you can, that's, that's, a, that's certainly overcomable. But if you have a more emotional resistance or philosophical resistance or ethical resistance, I'd love to hear more and uh, try to uh, convert you. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, this is, this is, this is where I get religious. No, um, no, I, 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 I thought, I thought a lot about this stuff, obviously. And as you know, I uh, try to live my life ethically, authentically, uh, according to the great spirit. And this is the position I've come to. And I'd love to have the discussion about it because I really think it's the ethical position. So let me know what you think.